So you broke down a pen. All right. Uh, uh, if I get everybody's attention, um, thanks for uh, allowing us to get everything ready and get everybody in. Um, this is going to be our heart health workshop, and one of the biggest things here is is that oh. we understand that uh, the purpose of this is to empower the individual to reach their maximum health potential. One of the biggest things that we don't understand and talk enough about is, is that we really don't have a health care system here in America. It's a sick care system. And so we want to empower you, the, the doctor within, to heal yourself by understanding the cause of a problem. Heart health. You know, our hearts are pretty incredible, right? Everybody take your uh, right hand like this, place it on your sternum because it's not way over here it's actually right behind here and that's the size of your heart you can sit there and look at it and think wow for me my heart is about that big well that heart is what pumps approximately 2,000 gallons of blood a day beating over 115,000 times through 61,000 miles on average of cardiovascular blood vessels a day, never stopping. And so, yeah, that's pretty amazing. But the fact is, is that we oftentimes don't use it enough in the right way. So we're gonna start this off in the right way. We're gonna have everybody put your stuff down in your seat and stand up. Yes, yeah, so and for those of you who've been here before, this is where, yeah, this is where we came. Um, so what you're going to do is you are not going to hit. You are not going to hit the person in front of you, but you are going to pretend like you're punching. And we are going to exercise in the way that I will explain why it's so important that all of us do this. We're going to do it for 20 seconds. We're going to be punching as fast as you go. The point of this is to go to 90% output in four, three, two, and one. As fast as you can go. As hard as you can go, you are trying to raise your heart rate. For some of us, this can be therapeutic. My neck hurts. Breathing in and out for 20 seconds, which is over. <laughs> in about four, three, two, and one, and doing it again. Go! And what we want to be doing is paying attention to what our body is doing. Not thinking. <laughs> Does that make sense, right? So the idea 
is, is that's the history of it. But where's it going to go? What do we have to change to make a difference? What has changed? It started out with Hungry Man, right? TV dinners. And then it turned into <laughs> Tuna Helper, right? Some of y'all are going, what the heck is he talking about, right? TV dinner. It was in aluminum foil. You actually put it in a real oven. And you baked it for a little while. One microwave. And then it turned into Tuna Helper and Hamburger Helper and all these other things until food came to us from someone handing it to us through a fat fast food window. Those chicken nuggets are six months old. The buns and fries are over five years old. It is in this cake tray not rotting because of what is not in it and because of what is in it. And that, my friends, is what people consider to be food today. And it is part of this reason that we continue to not make any ground. We're not saving lives. And the future is said to be even worse that by 2030, that 40% of Americans, that's men, women, and children, not 40% of adults, 40% of Americans will have some form of cardiovascular disease. So let's pretend um, that the round numbers would be 300 million, because we're right around 320 million. So 300 million, 40% is 120 million, divide 120 million into what they estimate right now we're in the 600 billion but by 2030 they say it's going to be 818 billion dollars a year to treat cardiovascular disease you get six thousand six hundred and sixty dollars and 16 cents per person of profit for the major medical machine i say it that way to shock you on purpose why because you think it's a cost they think it's a profit. Corporate capitalism, not capitalism, but when capitalism takes over by the corporations and the corporation is more important than the people, we become the profit margin. Your sickness is their profit. And for you to think about it any other way allows the wool to be pulled over your eyes. And until we pull the wool back, remove the veil, and allow ourselves to understand that our health has always been our own responsibility. It cannot be sold to you in a pill or a potion. It doesn't come in the form of an adjustment. It doesn't come in the form of a supplement, a lotion, a potion. It comes from within you. You have everything inside of you that you need. God created us this way. What we need to do is change your mindset so that when you leave here today, you no longer think when you have a problem, I don't care if it's a headache, a low backache, it's a whatever ache. It's not what do I need to put in me to fix me. It is what am I doing to myself that isn't allowing my body to adapt to the environment in which I'm asking it to adapt. What have I already done to myself? I'll give you an example. My son, Jonah, he's at church camp. And he comes, uh, I saw him on Friday, and he's like, Dad, you know, you're my good friend. I just met this kid. And um, I was like, why is he your good friend? He said, because I asked him when he said he had a headache, um, I asked him, I thought I was like going to get it. I said, but I asked him, why are you, uh, why do you think you have a headache? And the kid looked at him and said, well, um, I think it's because I've been eating like crap. <laughs> I've been drinking Gatorades and sodas. I haven't been drinking my water. My parents made me eat vegetables all the time. And he said, and, and then I played all the time. He said, I hadn't done any of that this week. He said, so I think I'm just probably toxic. I just need to drink a lot of water. <laughs> like, yeah. And Joe was like, whoa, this kid is great. He's like, what happened to you? I need your water bottles. And he was like, oh my God. And so Jeremiah and Jonah became great friends. And at the end of the week, when I showed up to pick him up, he couldn't wait to introduce him. Dad, you're going to like this kid. And, and, and it was awesome. And, 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 there, and so the point is, is that it is what we are learning. When I am teaching my 11-year-old, will allow him to control his own outcomes for the rest of his life. You don't need to depend on your doctor. You don't have to depend on your chiropractor. You don't have to depend on your pharmacist. You are here to depend on you. And the understanding is, what is cholesterol? Is it the boogeyman? 
Is it what your body just erroneously starts to produce and it gets out of control and it kills you when you aren't looking? Isn't that what they want you to believe? And then they help you by, they prescribe you pills, they lower your LDL and your cholesterol, but yet the numbers still haven't changed. We get about 600,000 people dying a year. Since I've been talking, there's been over 20 people dying in the United States. Just since I've been talking. From heart attacks and strokes. By the time we're done, there'll be a couple hundred. So you have to understand that cholesterol is made by, by the body for a purpose. And that cholesterol is woven into the cell membrane of every single cell of your body. That it is an essential piece of every steroid hormone made in the body. Testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, which we'll be talking a lot about. Um, it is a part of all of those building blocks. And it is necessary for life. So now you answer the question, do you think that God made junk and that your body just loses control and it made you with this nasty cholesterol? Or do you think that that was there for a purpose? And if it's there for a purpose and it's a part of every single cell in our body, then it isn't that cholesterol is good or bad. It is why is it out of balance? Does that seem like a better question? Why am I losing control of something that my body was meant to have? That's the right question. We need logic in our lives, understanding, so that when you leave here, you make better decisions. And so we understand that, um, a, number one, cholesterol isn't LDL and it isn't HDL. HDL and LDL are phospholipids because cholesterol is a waxy, um, oily substance. And so oil and water don't mix. And so we need a carrier molecule. We basically need an Uber, right? Or a bus. And it needs to carry the cholesterol through the body. So it's very important that you understand that cholesterol is good, both forms. There is no bad form. There is just a bad balance of cholesterol. And then understanding as we go through what causes that bad balance, then you can fix it. And so when we look at these things, um, the HDL, the good cholesterol, versus the LDL, they both are carrying molecules. And the way I learned it in school was LDL leaves the liver. HDL <laughs> is home to the liver. And so liver, literally, they have two different transports. Anything that needs to be returned to the liver for recycling is carried by HDL. Anything that needs to go out to the body to deliver something that is vitamins A, D, E, or K, anything fat-soluble, or any fat-soluble substance like a triglyceride, a piece of cholesterol, a chylomicron, the different versions of these things, this is what carries them out from the liver. So why do we get out of balance? And understanding then, so you can go back and look at your blood work better when you go see somebody like Dr. Adams here, who was going to speak in a minute. Um, when we talk about these things, you need to understand what's good and bad about them both. So ApoE is a part of LDL, and it has four different variants that we can test for. So it's not just your general blood work. Well, actually, let me step back. Just a little bit. Um, the balance. Ratios. Normally, we say um, LDL really below 150, but it's optimum at 100 or right around there. HDL in men is 40 to 70. Women, 50 to 90. But those ranges have very different outcomes. Just like when your vitamin D is within range, which is above 30, then you basically just don't get osteoporosis rickets that bad. That's how it does. But if, you're, if your vitamin D is up around 80 to 100, then all of a sudden now you have lowered, resist, lowered incidence of MS, most cancers, you have all kinds of health benefits. So again, the range is important. So let's give you an example. 150, supposedly perfect cholesterol, two different people. One person has an HDL of 25 and an LDL of 125. They're both still perfect. Hey, you get a phone call, your cholesterol is normal. Have a nice day. Um, that's your blood work report. Or you get a blood work report that says, okay, these are your ratios, you're within range. The second person has an HDL of 65 and an LDL of 85. Still equal length. 
the person with an HDL of 25 has four times the cardiovascular risk factor that the person with the HDL of 65 does. So knowing that knows where you are in the scale of your blood work. Now you know how to read your blood work. But now stepping forward into the LDL, we have variants. And so there's four variants, two, three, and four. Um, are the, the main components, one, two, three, and four. Um, variants two and four have an increased risk of cardiovascular problems, and variant four has an increased risk of dementia. So again, you can test to know what your variants are of your LDL. It's possible now on blood work. You simply have to ask for these advanced tests. Then you need to know, well, is it type A or is it type B? Type A is what's called fluffy, large LDL. Type B is the small, dense LDL, or small size. The more small size you have, the more cardiovascular plaquing you're going to have. Why? Because it's, the, it, it's, it's showing up as part of the root. The root of the problem is that it's oxidized. It's rotten. It's rusted. Just like oxidation of our pipes, or oxidation of wood, or oxidation of, it's of metal, it's rust. It's already rusted, so it doesn't form very well. It doesn't work very well. It doesn't carry things very well. And so what happens is, is you have a lifestyle that is causing, here's a fact. Are you aware that your LDL is not mostly coming from your nutrition? 80% of the LDL that is floating in your bloodstream is produced by your liver on purpose for a reason. 80% by your liver. So when you change your nutrition, the, what happens with the nutrition affects that 80%. But it's not just by lowering the amount of LDL that's coming in through your nutrition that you're gonna get the result. That's not how it happens. It's about reducing the reasons for high cholesterol, which is inflammation and toxins in your bloodstream that are causing irritation throughout your bloodstream and in every cell, organ, and tissue in your body. The increase in inflammation makes your liver produce cholesterol because cholesterol is a repair molecule and is a part of repairing every single cell lining and making the steroid hormones to also build our body. That, with that knowledge, is the understanding that if I reduce my inflammation, then I reduce the need on my liver. My liver will stop producing it on purpose. Instead of taking a drug that artificially lowers it, while you feel secure to go on about your lifestyle of creating the inflammation, and now your body doesn't even have that repair molecule that it needed because you artificially lowered it. So now you're not even repairing as well as you should. This is why we improve LDL, but death rates we're still losing as many people to you. So just that knowledge is a big deal. So that we understand that um, we can make changes to this. So I am trying to sell you something. I am trying to sell you on a lifestyle that will allow you to have less information or less toxicity, less inflammation, which will allow you to have the control over your life. So realize instead of selling you a pill, we want to sell you on you and your ability to make the changes. And so when we think about high blood pressure, we're going to talk about this for just a moment. And then I have Dr. Adams come up. Um, if I can make this, uh, find the cursor. Here we go. So um, three causes for most diseases are the same causes of high blood pressure and um, high cholesterol. Three causes. A deficiency in something in the body, a toxicity in something in the body, or a lack of control of the body. When you boil them all down and distill them back to their essence, those are going to be the root cause of most things. So the first thing that can cause high blood pressure is autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So that's why one of the reasons there's a lot of heart drugs in this drug jug is because we have a lot of people who no longer need them anymore when they get their nervous system back in balance. 
and their nervous system is able to control and coordinate their subconscious body better, and their subconscious body's nervous system now balances the blood pressure. Second reason is, is that when we are pumping 60,000, we're supposed to have 60,000 miles in the average human. So what if you gain 75 extra pounds? You gotta get blood to that, right? So now you don't have 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels, you got 75,000 miles worth of blood vessels. Well, doesn't it take more pumping to pump further through more pipes? So the only way to reduce the pressure is to lose the pipes by losing the weight so that you don't have to pump it through there. If I artificially lower the blood pressure through a medication, but you still got all that extra pipe, is the blood getting through there very efficiently? Are you getting oxygen and nutrition to each part better? No. Now, if you're, if you're inflamed all the time because of your nutrition and you're pumping syrup instead of watery blood, because it's full of sugar and it's full of toxins and it's irritating the blood the lining, then all of a sudden now you're getting narrowing of the arteries because cholesterol is coming through and trying to create a smooth, waxy substance for that blood to flow past. That's why it lays down on the irritated endothelium lining of a tube that watery blood is supposed to pass through. So now you're narrowing. So now you got more pipes. You got Narrow pipes, so now the blood pressure has to keep going up to keep pumping it through there. So once again, the only way to really lower the blood pressure is to clear out those arteries and to reduce the amount of body mass, and then your body will naturally react purposely. Again, what have I done to my body that has made it adapt and do the best it could <coughs> given the environment I put it in? Those are the questions we need to be asking ourselves if we're going to solve our own problems. And isn't that what you're here to do, is to learn something so that you can leave and go out and have a better quality of life? So that you can change your family tree? So that you expect health, happiness? You expect to hand that down instead of disease runs in my family? Isn't that heart disease, diabetes? We don't run it for running your family. We want you to hand down a family tree of health. So we're going to talk about a new machine and some opportunities. I'm going to have Dr. Adams come on up, if you would, please. Uh, this is my MD, Dr. Charles Adams, and he'll hand those around. Y'all can start passing those around. This will tell uh, a good bit about what he's going to talk about. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Why is that you gave the fall? Hey, fellow, here you go. Here you go, each year. So. No, I appreciate being able to hear a speaker for once. Uh, I never forget in medical school, one of the cardiologists said that our valves are not big. If someone said, I got a pump this big, or someone just put a little big push around, that's how much we're talking about. That, it's 24 hours. 2,000, yeah. A, a swimming pool. Every swimming pool, you know, kind of gallon there, a swimming pool, I've seen swimming pools, you know, that, that's miraculous. And we got valves in the heart, and the cardiologist made it worse. He said the valves in our heart they've got it harder than the mountains in the in the toughest environment you can imagine: ice, snow, rain, everything. You know, these valves, you know, pump it right all through. So uh, most amazing. It's just most amazing. Uh, and Dr. Hill is telling us something really, really, really. Fundamental and that is most of our problems are self-inflicted. You know, you've been marking here that hey, you come to me and I'll give you a pill. You can do what you've been doing. You're going to be okay. No, because that doesn't work. Uh, it occurred to me that I've got to redo this so the next time you see this, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll give some to Anna because I've got to dig your bar. But uh, if you go about a third way down the page, the sentence starts with approximately. Approximately 30% of the heart attacks that occur every day are a sudden death surprise. No warning. To the vernacular of the English folks, DRT, dead right there. Uh, no idea, no warning, no, you know, no clue. And over half of these folks have normal cholesterol. We've been marketeered here appropriately about the cholesterol. It ain't, it ain't cholesterol. I mean, maybe one percent of the time. And that's a bad family cholesterol problem, but that's that's rare in cholesterol. 
of course, as you should. Now, uh, the small blood vessels clog up before the big blood vessels. We've got a homeostatic system here where all the pipes are at the same temperature. The liquid is pretty much the same. Now, in the homes, we have the hot water in the sink and we'll flush all the fat and, the, and, and all these other things in the, in the lard and so forth. But then when they get all downstream and get cool, then they'll clog up the big pipes. You know? Well, that doesn't happen with us. You know, all pipes are the same. You know, and so uh, by the time you get the blockages, it's been going on in the little pipes. Uh, <clears throat> the small blood vessels clog up before the big ones. And this process starts 10 plus years before the heart attack. Okay? The story, you know, am I a walking heart attack or not? Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, down at the very bottom of the, of the page, most of our cardiac tests are looking at our large blood vessels, the big blood vessels of the heart. They can't see the little ones feeding the big ones. Okay? <clears throat> the tests I'm talking about are teriogram. The um, exercise of a stress thallium test, the coronary RAC T score. Go look at the bands. By the time the bands are in, you're done, you're toast, you're history. Come on. You know, you're behind the eight ball. And so um, now we'll transfigure up to the very top of the page. The EKG machine is just over 100 years old. It's been researched for over 100 years. Thousands of papers have been published about the squiggly little lines. And the EKG I'm talking about, it's the 12 lead EKG. You got the thing on your wrist and on each ankle, and then you've got 12 things stuck on your chest. And so that's the 12 lead EKG. And each little line is, produces a different squiggly line. And over the past 100 years or so, the, the graduate students, they're kind of like medical students, they'll do whatever you tell them. They got to, they have no choice. And so they, you know, fly all these mathematics, and then we got computers and analyzing all this stuff and all this information. And they're like, Shazam! This is amazing. And hadn't come on with the, with the mainstream docs yet. Uh, mathematicians, computers, arteriograms, autopsies, physiology, electrophysiology grad students have converted the EKG and its squiggly lines into a nearly perfect crystal ball. We're talking about a type of EKG that has the capability of sort of looking in the future and say, uh, <clears throat> sorry, here's where you're headed. Uh, and uh, kind of interesting. The, the name of it is the multifunctional cardiogram that I have up here at the top of the page. And it's not a perfect test, but it's pretty doggone good. Here's the comment here, kind of in the middle of it. The sensitivity is 93% and specificity is 87%. We got any uh, uh, statistical nerds here in the group? Good, neither am I. This is a lot better than most of the tests we can inflict on you. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. And the MCG test can be done without an invasive procedure or particularly toxic chemicals or ionizing radiation. It can be done in the doctor's office in about 10 minutes. And the other neat thing is it can track progress. In other words, you get the first one, you're the uh, first one goes up. <clears throat> Technically speaking, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at least that's what mine said. And I'm like, yeah, that's not very nice. I've had a bunch of chelation therapy. I sort of exercise a little bit. Like, you know. And so, <clears throat> but then you can basically change your diet, change your exercise. Uh, Dr. McGill mentioned inflammation. I got some bad news for you. Just about every anything inflamed, it can be reduced by exercise. Yeah, don't don't steal everything now. So I went down and went to his office, had this test done, we're white over getting the results, and we'll go through mine here soon, and I'll be telling y'all about the experience. But the big thing is, is that this was a seven minute, because it took him a minute to get me to lay down and stop talking, it only took him <laughs> six minutes to put the stuff on me, and then to do the test, and then it was done. And so now we're just awaiting the result. It was painless. I laid there. They, they did say I couldn't meditate or sleep, so that did say. 
Um, but that was the worst of it. And so the great news is, is that I'm going to get this predictive long look at what I'm going to have. And it's available to you. It was, it was a couple hundred dollars um, to have it done. I believe it was, that's how much it was. It was uh, two or three hundred dollars. Had some other things done while I was there. So I don't know exactly what it cost. Um, but the idea here is, is this, the, the where am I now is so invaluable so that you know your markers as to how fast I have to change. So if you could know what's going to happen to you 10 years from now cardiovascularly, how important is that to you? Right? One year. In one year. One year. There you go. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Um, so one of the biggest things is, is that when we look at these, that's up to you. Because, but now we have to talk about the solution. The solution is wrapped inside of Max Living's five essentials because as becoming the, the standard of real delivery of a healthcare system, we have to empower you with the steps that you can implement, but there is a mindset that comes inside of this. And it is that this, it starts with this. You cannot BS yourself. You have to ask yourself a question today. It answers now, and it has a lot of bearing on what you're going to do. Are you willing to do what is necessary to obtain what is possible. I will steal Dr. Adams' quote. There is nothing a doctor can do for you to undo what a patient won't do. There is nothing that a doctor can do for you to undo what a patient won't do. There's never going to be a pill that gives you the exercise. There's never going to be a pill that just magically reduces your cholesterol, gets all your inflammation, and rids you of all your problems, and you live happily ever after. I'm sorry. There are intangibles to the way that God made the world that we will never understand. There are intangibles that are the way our body works. And a thousand years of science is still not going to unravel that. But there are principles at play that when we learn those, those, those realities, and we play within those standards, our bodies naturally react. And so what are your action steps? Number one is stop fooling yourself. If you're not willing to make the changes right now, at least have a good attitude about it and go on about your way. But if you really want to be healthy, you have to realize that, you know what? You're in charge. What are your biggest action steps? You already know them. Come on. Is it that you go through fast food every day? Is it you never exercise? Is it that you, what is it? You know it. Say it to yourself and deal with it. Because I'm going to talk to you about this heart healthy nutrition and I'm going to give you all these superfoods and it's going to be amazing. But realize there's nothing super about the food except that it gives you a large amount of nutrition in a small package, but it is your body's absorption and utilizing getting rid of deficiencies getting rid of toxicities, and allowing your body to have better chemical control that is the healing. Healing is the formation of new cells. The, the, the cells that get cut on your arm don't magically have little tiny sewing machines in there and sew themselves back together. They die. And new ones replace the old ones, built out of whatever you give them. So if you were constantly irritating the cardiovascular system and all you're giving it is poison and sugar, that's what it has to rebuild itself out of, inflamed tissue. So let's talk about some of these things, though. This is amazing stuff. The top, like, this is uh, NAC. N-acetylcysteine is a great, um, uh, something that we get from our food. Um, substance, it comes to us from cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. That's why they're so good for us. Um, Everything, I'm going to step back and say the, the generality. Number one, every single one of us would be better off if our nutrition was 80% plant-based. And it, all of that was organic. But if it's not going to be organic due to price constraint, you need to know EWG.org has the dirty dozen and the clean 15. The 12 worst foods to eat from the, the regular conventional and the cleanest 15. So that at least then you can shop smart. 
So now it's all organic, it's all grass fed, it's all wild caught, it's all free range. All of your animal products are the number one thing to, to fix first. Because of one of the biggest things that helps clean out our arteries is healthy fat. And if you're getting sick fat from sick animals, you're poisoning yourself worse than if you're getting pesticide laden food. It's even worse. Because they ate pounds and pounds of that pesticide food to make one pound of milk. And then you're eating them. So you're getting a magnified portion of those poisons. So the next one is niacin. Uh, niacin has been shown to uh, high levels of, uh, according to Harvard, high levels of um, niacin have been shown to reduce uh, the plaquing in artery by up to the 20 something things percent. It ranged from like 23 to 26 percent. So red meat in beef liver is the highest concentration of niacin, B3. Beef liver, grass fed, of course. Um, good sources are nuts and seeds, legumes, and bananas. But look at one of the suggestions coming out of Harvard that they say is part of the problem. They're even getting it wrong because they say that fortified cereals are a good source. But what does a cereal, which is a grain, turn into within five seconds of being in your mouth? Sugar. Why? Because all the enzymes that break down bread, pasta, crackers, cookies, and break them down into the simple sugar so that we can absorb them are produced in your saliva. So literally, within five seconds of being in your mouth, your blood sugar is going up. Now, omega-3 fatty acids are um, have seen a lot of probably the most research. Um, and so again, cold water fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, I would skip the canned tuna because unfortunately it's lined, the can, uh, can lines are BBA lined, and uh, tuna are a large fish, they've eaten a lot of small fish, so they have high concentrations of mercury. So the outweighing, getting the omegas from the canned tuna is like a, eh, I don't know how much better it is because you're getting all the BBA plastic and you're getting the mercury, and those are poisons. So uh, fresh, wild caught is the essential. Um, and so, um, Another good, uh, so herring, sardines, mackerel, these are better sources. Now, nuts and seeds coming from flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. Walnuts not being there, a little more absorbable, but the flax seeds and the chia seeds. The problem is, is that mammals have omega-3 fatty acid in the two main forms of EPA and DHA. But vegetables produce omega-3 fatty acid in the form of ALA. And unless... You've been a lifetime vegetarian. So and the longer you're a vegetarian, the longer you're a vegan, the more your body produces the enzymes to convert it over to EPA and DHA. But if each one of us were to just go vegetarian or just go vegan, our, our ability to convert that vegetable source over is somewhere between 1 and 10%. So that's a lot of chia seeds, that's a lot of hemp seeds, that's a lot of orange oil. So this animal source is just more absorbable to us. As long as it's not coming from a sick animal, from a feedlot, being fed poisons and being fed antibiotics to keep down the inflammation and keep them from dying. Grass-fed beef is a good source of omega oils. As a matter of fact, it's right in the um, ratio of around 2 to 1, um, which is omega-3 to omega-9. Now, another thing that a lot of people are really deficient in is the nitric oxide producing nutrients that allow us to vasodilate and expand our blood vessels. So um, uh, vegetables that are high in nitrates are celery, lettuce, spinach, beetroot. The supplements and or just vitamins, um, C, E, and D are huge in allowing us to have proper cardiovascular health. And so you have to ask yourself, when it comes to your nutrition, Answer these questions about yourself. For the past seven years, have you eaten, eaten seven servings of vegetables a day from an organic source? For the last seven years, have you eaten seven servings of fruit from an organic source? Have you eaten at least two servings of cold water fish, wild caught, over most days of the week? We can go five, five days a week. Over the last seven years. Raise your hand if you have. I can only go halfway up because I'm in about five years. That's it, y'all. 
We're all learning at a different rate. So that's why it's important to look at supplement. That's why it's important to get started now with making the changes that you can change. Start with the measurement. I love the measurement, this new system, this new machine. I like to be able to look forward into my future and know just how strict I need to be to get to where I want to be a year from now or six months from now, to be able to predict my outcome. How necessary is it? Omega-3 fatty acids, consuming fish twice a week can result in a 30% reduction in coronary artery disease. Hello, 36%. Two portion. So we all say to ourselves, well, it's just too expensive to buy cold water fish fresh, wild caught. Well, how expensive is a heart attack? How expensive is it to be out of work for six months? How expensive is it to go to the hospital and spend a hundred grand? Especially if you don't have insurance, right? That's how expensive it is to not make these changes now so that that doesn't become part of your future. So one of the biggest things that we have to be aware of is, is that deficiencies, toxicities, and the lack of control are what allow our bodies to have a root cause and get further and further out of balance. So as far as supplements, before I will do any kind of cardiovascular bundle and focus on blood pressure or focus on cholesterol or focus on you know, your nitric oxide production, any of those things, you have to hit the essentials. And it's starting to get those seven servings of vegetables, seven servings of fruit, the fresh fish, the clean meats. Those changes are always there. But in the background, we need to supplement like we're trying to catch up. That's why, before anything, I tell people, all my, all my patients, to get on the daily essentials. Because the daily essentials has the omega oil supplement in it. It has the vitamin D supplement in it. It has the multivitamin and mineral in it. It has the magnesium in it that when you're deficient in magnesium, you often get arrhythmic changes in the cardiovascular system. Your nervous system doesn't function right, so it can aggravate any underlying neurological or cardiovascular symptom. So all that's already in the daily essential. So now we're filling all the gaps. It doesn't mean you can eat my crap still. Taco Bell does not go back on the menu just because you're taking your daily essentials. I'm sorry. <laughs> talk, talk bad about me later. The fact is, is that it still means that now you can be confident that you're not deficient in anything. When you have less deficiencies, your body is able to produce or deflame the body better. So now you have less toxicity, which reduces your inflammation which gives you less need for cholesterol. See where this is going? Um, and so when we look at these things, um, the cardiovascular, like a wellness funnel, you know you've been eating clean for a few years and you're on track and you're making the changes. So then you're looking at CoQ10 um, and you're looking at reducing your inflammation. I like the C3 product because it's turmeric, uh, curcuminoids mixed with black pepper extract, which increases your absorption by like 300%. So it's not just the turmeric that's in there, it's your body's ability to absorb it, right? If I gave you a calcium supplement that was made of calcium carbonate, that's concrete, by the way. Um, how well are you going to absorb concrete? Not very well. But if I give you calcium gluconate, which is attached to a sugar molecule, it's going to go in just like it, right? I mean, that's what they say. They put, it, they put all that sugar in there to try to hydrate you with electrolytes because the body is going to suck that sugar in. So what we want to do is do it from a healthy perspective instead of using sugar. Um, so now the cholesterol balance, um, I, I like this is a very temporary system right here though. Because um, whether it's a statin drug or whether it's CoQ10 mixed with red yeast rice, you're still inhibiting the body's ability to produce cholesterol. Maybe you're at a threshold where your cholesterol is 400 and your blood pressure is, you know, at 160 over 90 or something. You need intervention. We want you alive long enough to benefit from all the health changes. So maybe you need to do that from an emergency standpoint. Only people with that one. Your doctor, whatever. So that's where your assessment comes in. And this can replace Lipitor and Probostatin and all these other things that have a lot of muscle wasting and cramps and a lot of problems that people have from them. Um, so that's one way. But either way, you still got to get in there and replace what's causing the inflammation. That, that, the plant red yeast rice, the CoQ10, I look at that more of the band-aid. More of the, 
the things that are meant to allow you to have the amount of nutrients to have the proper vasodilation, that's the NOx. That's what you would be getting and mixing in. And I, at this point, everybody's like, okay, forget this sounds like a lot, Doc. Just tell me what you take. Well, get ready. Um, I take the daily essentials. My kids take the kids' multivitamin. They take the omega E valve because they don't like to swallow the large horse pills that are the um, omega supplements. And, um, and then they take our children's vitamin D gummies. That's my kid. I take the Daily Essentials, that Knox product, I mix in with electrolyte synergy, which gives me my vitamin C along with the electrolytes. I take L-arginine and L-carnitine because there's lots of research that show that it helps strip the arteries. Um, and again, all this stuff, I've only been doing these things for the last really five years, right? So I've been learning and growing and getting better with all these things too. Um, I support my immune system with uh, I am support. Adrenal Revive is something because I'm a high stress person. I'm always on the go, whether it's here or with my four kids. And then I take zinc support. Those are my daily things. And at least five days a week, I mix Max Greens in with my protein smoothie so that I can skip a high calorie meal and I can just have healthy nutrition. The other things that I do um, that I would encourage everyone to do at least one day a week, if not three, is intermittent fasting. Um, on a 16-8 window, you basically go to bed, you eat early, go to bed and don't have anything else but water until that next, you know, four hours plus the 12. So what you're doing is, is if you quit eating at 8, then you can't eat anything until noon the next day. The most important meal is the first meal because it will determine how high your insulin and glucose go for the rest of the Will you be on the roller coaster again? Or do you come off of, which is, this is another thing that's very hard for vegans and vegetarians because their diet is so laden with, with uh, grain, um, is, is that you must come off on healthy fats and protein so that your blood sugar does not spike, your insulin doesn't go up. That is the most important meal for intermittent fasting, period. Who has a question about that? We've got just a few more slides before we're done, and y'all look sedated. So let's all put our stuff down and stand up and have a little more. Come on. I understand. Alright, so now that we're all standing up, we're going to do something, and I don't want to kick anybody in the teeth unless you. So we're going to do something called fast feet, where you're going to pretend like you have a fire underneath your feet, and you don't want to catch your shoes on fire. And so in four seconds, we're going to go as fast as we can. Three, two. One, go. Move your feet as fast as you can. Again. I see some shoes playing. Oh, uh, Move. So what we're doing is we're trying to get our heart rate up to the 90 percent time. Bring all of us. So start where you can. In three, in two, and one. Stop. Realize carbon dioxide is leaving. Oxygen being delivered to the body. Doing it again. Three, two, one, go. Move down. Are you really getting your 90%? It's a self awareness game here, folks. So what's a good breakfast? Good break the bath. 
a good break the fast is nuts and seeds, Greek yogurt unsweetened, with nothing sweeter than a handful of berries. Eggs, great source. Um, protein can be the eggs, the cheese, grass fed, of course, you know, free range chicken, things like that. Um, again, protein can be a healthy piece of meat, a piece of chicken, a piece of fish. How about oatmeal? Oatmeal is a great, it's going to turn right into sugar. It goes right in there. No, that is one of the, oh, let me just it the, uh, yeah. It's a good toxic dose of gluten. Um, unfortunately, not to mention, most of the grains in the United States, 90 plus percent are GMO. That means they've been sprayed with Roundup, which means you're also <laughs> getting your gliss phosphate dose for the day, which will make sure that you have non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Isn't that great? They just lost a, what, $8 billion lawsuit uh, over that, they know now that most of the non Hodgkin's lymphoma is really coming from the Roundup spread. Come on, folks. We've got to become aware of these things and talk about the logics of them. This is we the people. You are the people. We are the people. We're not talking about someone else. This is us. Exercise. The mindset behind exercise is that it's not optional. The more stressful job you have, sweating it out on the pavement, 10,000, 12,000, 14,000 steps a day, the more you need exercise, not the less. Yes, your steps are irrelevant to your exercise. That's movement. But what happens when you're at work? Oh my gosh, I'm this boss looking. If I gotta get this done, I don't get this done, I'm not gonna get a raise, I don't get a raise, I'm gonna do this. You're under stress while you're walking and getting all of those steps. So we need to talk about that because this is the problem. This is what doesn't happen when you just get your steps. You still have the stress, you still have the heart or high blood pressure, you still are developing the heart disease because of what you were born to have under stress, called cortisol, a steroid hormone that you have to have enough cholesterol to make. But cortisol's job, the way we were created was, when we're under stress, our adrenal glands will produce cortisol. Cortisol's job, when it's in your bloodstream, is to elevate platelets, to elevate clotting factors, to elevate cholesterol, so that if you get wounded in that stress, you will have the nutrition. It also elevates blood sugar and insulin, so that it can drive it into the muscle tissue if you're running from the bear. But since we're never running from the bear, we just have chronic stress. So literally our hormones are causing cardiovascular disease because we think we get enough steps. And you never exercise just how we just did. The key and the reason I was so intent on the 90% is because that's 90% of it. You have to get up there and come down so that your body it hormonally will think you got in the fight and won. Then you got away, and if you had to fight again, then again, then again. And when you do that, you mimic what our children do every single day. Do you ever see them go, I want that ball before that other kid? <laughs> right? No. They're like, I want that ball. Boom. They're gone. They'll knock that kid down, grab that ball, man. <laughs> they play baseball that way. They play soccer that way. They do everything. Boom! 90%. And that's why they're so healthy. That's why they have healthy cardiac profiles. That's why they're at their ideal weight most of the time. All the ones who act like adults because they want to play video games, and just like the adult who sits in the cubicle, what are they? <laughs> they're sick, fat, and nearly dead. Just like the adults that just do nothing but sit. That's it, folks. We have to be aware and implement so one of the other things, here's the other 10% of exercise. Well, I'll just do the demonstration. I'm going to go on my 30 minute run. 30 minutes. Oh my God, do I really have time to do this? I really need to get work. Oh my goodness, I don't know the kids, I got all the stuff. What am I going to do this? What am I going to do with this? Oh my gosh, I'm worrying the whole time. What am I doing? I'm stressing. <laughs> You're defeating the purpose. Exercise has to be done in mindless. You are doing it nothing but for the exercise. It's nothing but the game. It's nothing but the point of winning. 
Winning for an adult is living long. Children do it for the game. They're there for the love of it. They're excited about it. It's their juice. So exercise in your juice. What is it? I love to cycle. Mountain biking, just, man, just, whew, it's good stuff. I can take the kids with me. I love to play soccer. I love to play football. I like to play basketball. My son's now on the basketball team here in Dade County. And he crushed me yesterday. It's awful. Awesome. <laughs> oh, gosh, we did one on one. I had this great idea. I've been playing at lunch. Thought I was getting better, man. He smoked me. It was awful. Good job, man. Um, <laughs> the fact is, is that this is, this is the idea. It was still so much fun. And I didn't die. Um, and even though it was 90 something degrees out, and we were out there sweating it out at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, the idea what are you going to do that you enjoy, that you can do mindlessly? I love Max T3. It's maxt3.com. You can go there, and it's um, the same cyclic exercises. It has lower body, it has an upper body. You go there, there's a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced. You watch the video, you follow along, and you do your version. And it's 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 20 seconds on. And it's only 15 minutes long, requires very little equipment. You can do it in your living room. I love the portability of it because I've logged it into my phone. If I'm on vacation, I have my kids, I'm going to go out, let's go down to the little gym down there. I'm going to go do Max T3. I can take my kids outside and do it. I can do it on the fly. That's what you see us doing out here in the parking lot. Me and Anna work out three or four days a week out there. That's what we're doing. It's Max T3. 20 bucks for a lifetime of these workouts. There's hours of workout on there. 20 bucks. Nothing have to do with it. What do I get you? 48 to 57% reduction in cardiovascular disease. Hello. Add that to eating fish twice a week. How expensive really is it? It's not. Downgrade your internet. Ride your bike somewhere. Same again. You just paid for that. Minimizing your toxins through sweating. If you don't sweat profusely every day, you're, you're not utilizing the third largest detoxer in the human body. Liver, then kidneys, then skin, folks. Plus the breathing, utilizing the skin of your lungs to get rid of carbon dioxide out of your body. Period. You have to sweat profusely every day. Get rid of the common things, but most people don't know that the plastics are a, disc um, are a uh, a hormone interrupter that again leads to cardiovascular disease. The um, really uh, synthetic fabrics that we're getting, we're getting PFOAs. So if that thing says it never wrinkles, it's water resistant, it lasts forever, it's PFOAs poisoning yourself. Go back to cotton and linen and have the wrinkles. You know, I mean, just become a hey, slow your stress. If you're cool with wrinkles, well, then you're not too stressed out. Right? <laughs> you slow your stress just by switching back to cotton. Why is the chiropractor talking to you about this? Deficiencies, toxicities, and lack of control. If you don't know how well your nervous system is functioning, you don't know how well your body can be. Listen, folks, where, 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 are, we, where are we titled death when the brain is no longer electrically functioning? We understand that it required for any body part to function properly, it needs the brain to communicate with it through that electricity. So if your spine, or I should say since your spine is supposed to be hip straight, <coughs> spine straight, and from the side you're supposed to have these three curvatures, not just so your back won't hurt, but so your brain can communicate through the spinal cord out the network of nerves to every organ and tissue in your body. So this is the area that tells the heart how to speed up, and it feeds the, um, the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetics, that tells the heart how to sh um, speed up. Vagus nerve up top is what tells the heart how to slow down. So what if you are like most kids today, and adults, and then they go out and run, and they do all these things, they row, they fly, they do all these things with poor posture. That's what their spine looks like on the inside. But it's supposed to be shaped like this. And this is what's controlling their blood pressure. That's why that jug is so good. That's why the people were able to get off of it. It wasn't something that I did to them. It's that their body could heal and control their blood pressure better when we got rid of the supplementation. It's not me that's doing the healing. It's not the adjustment. It's the human body doing its job. And what happens, this is the research that's out there that tells what chiropractic does to blood pressure. 
We've done it in 17 points with just the atlas adjustment. Improvement in lung function. In, uh, increasing the heart rate variability, which we know is one of the greatest measurements now. How, how big does your heart rate change every single day? If it's always the same and you're never exercising, that's a big predictor of your body's ability to develop cardiovascular disease. So that's why I always ask, do you know if your children have that? Do you know if you have a subluxation? If you don't know where it is and what it is, what's it doing to your body like a cavity in your tooth? It's developing for years before you get the symptom. If your child looks like that, or looks like this, and you already know, you're like, oh, oh goodness, for your grandchildren, they're doing this all the time. When would you like to know that? That's what your referral form is for. That's what friends and family need is for. It's to understand what chiropractic can do for your health totally. Every person who wants to refer somebody into this office for the next week um, you can have, uh, it can be done for $60. Any person, whether you're just restarting up, you're a kid, you're whatever, it covers your exam, it covers your x-rays, anything I need to do on the first visit, it's $60. To cut that front end cost for the parents who have, like me, four kids. If this was my first workshop and I had four kids, I'd be like, oh my goodness, I'm going to get all four of them checked. Now it's going to be $1,000. No, it's going to be $240 instead of $1,000. So that's step one, because so many of you need to know your action steps. What's the most implementable thing for you? Number one, if you don't know the health of your nervous system, that is the biggest blind spot in your health. Number two, it's what am I, what am I, what do I know I should do? What's the nutritional folly? What's the exercise folly? And then am I willing to do it? With that understanding again, there's nothing a doctor can do for you, for a patient, that they're unwilling to do for themselves, right? This, this is the key. And so our upcoming event, if you need to learn how to shop and you need to learn how, where all the toxins are hidden in foods, then it's Shop with the Doc Ingles. That's going to be July, uh, I believe it's going to be on the 18th at 6.30. That's our next, where I'm going to walk people through the grocery store. You'll sign up up front. On the way out, there'll be a sign-up sheet that you can sign up. We will walk through the grocery store, and I will show you where things are hidden, the code words for how they hide toxins like BFOAs, um, sugars, how they hide um, things like MSG and things like that in the food right there on the label so that from then on you know how to read those labels and you can do it for yourself. And you can get that junk out of your food. That's one Get connected with us, folks. Get on maxliving.com. Get on choosehealthchiropractic.com. Follow us on Facebook. The reality is, is that these are the, man, I have the raffle stuff. These are the things that are going to get people plugged back in. As we leave, if you're a new pick or you're not a patient, or you need to get reactivated, you can sign up for your uh, new patient appointments up front with Anna. You want attention? One of the reasons that so many people come to these workshops is because you automatically get 10% off all the supplements that you're going to get today. Yes? I'm sorry. I should have asked this before we were talking about food. No, please do. Go ahead. But, uh, where do you buy your fresh caught fish and your grass-fed beef? And can you find it in our local grocery stores? Or do you have to go to a Not specialty in a good shop? Price point. I have a cow slaughter every year, actually two. I buy a half a cow at a time, and I keep them in my freezer. We're in that area where we can do that, right? Mm -hmm. We're blessed to meet you. Um, I get my eggs from Anna. Um, I um, get raw milk from a patient who I don't have permission to give their name out yet, but I will ask. Um, and she delivers raw milk right here to me and Anna, and so we drink raw cow's milk. If I, I do buy grass-fed whole milk in small quantities at the grocery store at Ingles. Um, I buy my wild caught fish um, at uh, Costco, uh, and then I buy my wild caught fish at um, uh, what used to be Green Life, with Whole Foods. Okay. Um, that's where I get my fish, um, and that's our regular. Yes, please. Okay, what, how important is fiber? You talk about protein, how important is fiber? And where can we get a good source of fiber? I know vegetables have fiber. I love this question. <laughs> I guarantee you will not have a fiber problem. If you will eat seven servings of vegetables and seven servings of fruit, you'll never have to buy Xylem again. 
Guaranteed. Guaranteed. One more okay. question. Why do you think of soy products or tofu, and do you like or disagree with slow carbs, which are legumes and beans? I agree with, um, I, again, if you're going to eat vegetables, you're going to eat beans, legumes, th these are, um, those are great sources of protein. That's your price point. That's where you can get great sources of protein. Um, also, um, the, when you're in the core plan, and you're not on the advanced plan, you're, um, which, let me step back, the 80% organic, you know, the 80% whole food coming from, uh, pro, coming from vegetables, and then um, the rest of it being nuts and seeds, mm -hmm. and uh, being only low glycemic index vegetables. Nothing sweeter than a Granny Smith apple, berries, lemons, and limes. That's called the advanced plan. That is how you reverse disease. You want to reverse diabetes, you want to reverse it, the Align Your Health book that's up there on the, on the um, counter, you can purchase that Align Your Health book, which gives you a complete nutrition chapter. It gives you the advanced plan versus the core plan. The core plan allows healthy grains, things like quinoa, which is a complete protein, but it's still great. So it is processing stuff like the sugar. It is slower, but then you get millet and you get aroma and things like this. Um, you bake on the core plan, mostly still with almond flour and things like this, so that you can still eat sweets. We just had an amazing um, birthday cake full of almond flour, homemade, um, made from uh, whipped cream, that we made chocolate whipped cream, made our icing and everything. Um, so to finish answering your question, those are the basics. That's where I would go for that, where you can get the quick start guides from Anna if you want the cliff notes on the advanced plan versus the core plan. Um, next. Um, I, I really think that when we, those legumes and beans are good, I am not a fan of soy at all, 90 plus percent of it is GMO, and if you go to Japan or you go to China, they're not really eating as much as we make it out to be. It's, it's again, it's not as hot. Not to mention, it's all um, just pesticide related, so I, and it's also estrogenic for women, so it's going to increase your risk of breast cancer um, significantly. Okay. And it's estrogenic, so it's not that great for guys because it's estrogenic. <laughs> <laughs> else. Yeah. What about all these fancy milks that you can buy that's not milk? Not milk. Almond milk, right. milk, yeah. oat milk. Okay. Um, I am a better fan of uh, whole fat coconut milk because it's that monosaturated fat from a plant the way God created, intended it. But if all you're doing is blending chia seeds and water, and making your own nut milks, I think it's extremely helpful. Macadamia nut milk, cashew nut milk, all these things, you soak them, you sprout them, then you drain all that off, and then you make your own nut milk. Extremely helpful. Um, if you're buying it in the store, flip that around, and we'll do the food label reading class, and you'll read 100 words that you can't pronounce, and that's the problem. It's not the nut milk, it's what they're putting in their preserved. That's my gut reaction. If you're gonna do it, I do like macadamia nut milk, cashew milk, but again, they're moderates. It's better to take off avocado to put it into your smoothie and get it a whole fat, make it really silky. In your smoothie, in your um, ugly juice, which is what we call our kitchen sink juice, I really think that every person every day should drink a quart of what we call, my family calls, ugly juice. And that is um, a Vitamix or a heavy duty blender with a Granny Smith apple, parsley, cilantro, some form of a green. We change with kale, spinach, or something. Um, berries, and then a chunk of turmeric and a chunk of ginger, and blend it up. Our kids drink it, and she and I make it to a certain sweetness, and then we pour ours off, and then we add in another handful of berries and an extra squeeze of lemon, and then our kids will drink it. We make popsicles out of it. Summertime. My kids can eat all the popsicles they want if my wife made it, because they're made of ugly juice. That's it. I mean, they're just frozen ugly juice, so they're cold, and they have a popsicle. How about all these fancy substitute sugars, sweeteners? Absolutely don't like them. Um, the, the two that we do allow is stevia and monk fruit. Stevia and monk fruit are safe, they're non-toxic, but when you taste something that is sweet, your vagus nerve, this is why diet drinks increase obesity and heart disease. 
because your 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 saliva, your vagus nerve tastes sweet. It signals your pancreas within five seconds of being in your mouth to secrete insulin because it's expecting sugar. It doesn't know what monk fruit is. It doesn't know what stevia is or aspartame. So all of a sudden, now you've got a rise in insulin. If you don't get any calories in, and now your blood sugar goes down. What does your brain say? I'm hungry. Eat something sweet. I'm going to pass out. So you're actually consuming more food. You get more empty calories, and you get fat. So the artificial sweeteners are part of the problem. And I mean, like, how many people, let's be honest, you go to the, you go to the, you know, Wendy's and you get a double cheeseburger with fries and a Diet Coke. Huh. I mean, I mean, is that really going to do something? Oh, if you're going to go through there, just get the Coke. No, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic. I mean, let's be honest with that. So what else? Back to the I drink, I like raw, whole milk is best. Grass fed organic whole milk is going to be the next drop down. That's the best. Every time you draw out the fat, just flip the carpet around. The more fat they take out of it, the more sugar they have to put in. Otherwise, it tastes terrible. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, what are the things that taste good? Sugar, salt, and fat. Sugar, salt, and fat. That's it. So they're going to put one of those in there to make it taste better. I love this. This is where we need to be. Yes. Yeah. What is too young for chiropractic adjustment, and is there anybody too old? Um, the young, the, if they're still in the womb, I have to adjust them up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they and slippery. My children were checked. Um, we had some complications with all of them, to which we managed mom. And then it was around seven, seven minutes about 15 minutes, and unfortunately, one was closer to a half. We had a lot, of, a lot of very, it was very, it was hard. Um, but the fact is, is that, think about it. If you've ever watched a video of a C-section, this is, this is, I'm sorry, you brought up a great topic. Um, if you would watch a video of a C-section, and then you'll ask yourself the question of children need chiropractic, when that child is down in the birth canal and they wrench down into the uterus, double the shoulder, twist the head maximally, yeah. bring it backwards out, hold it by its head, and then hand it to the next doctor or nurse to be dealt with. And you ask me, you give it to the mom and say, oh, now be gentle. Got to stop now. <laughs> and we wonder why so many children have colic. They have ear infections. They have all of these things that are common, common, they have they have latching problems. They can only nurse on one side. I gotta hold it like this on this side because it can't twist its head. I mean, how many people and women say, I can't breastfeed because it won't last. We're having problems with all these things. Subluxation every time. So as soon as they're born, they need to be checked. How long would it, and then how old, as soon as you don't have, as soon as your brain dead, there's nothing I can do. Um, and that's it. Besides then, and that's the real core of chiropractic, and I greatly appreciate that question. Every single, this is all I'm going to say, as far as chiropractic is concerned. Every single human being, from the moment that they are born till the moment they die, would be better off with a properly functioning spine and nervous system. Their life will have better quality and quantity if that's the case. That's the only thing I can guarantee 100% of the time. If you have, someone has cancer, they certainly don't need to be self -esteem. They have diabetes, they certainly don't need to be self -esteem. They have heart disease, they don't need to be self -esteem. There's never a good time for self fixation because it makes everything else worse. What else? Any other questions? Yes. What is vitamin, I heard you mentioned vitamin K. What is vitamin K? Uh, so it's also part of our blood thinning system. It's a part of our balancing. It's one of the fat soluble vitamins. Okay. So it, it needs a transport molecule because you can't have fat and water. And oil and water don't mix. So that's why it's carried by uh, either LDL going to the cells or HDL going back if it's been processed or going to one of the um, organs that it's needed to produce hormones, like the ovaries, the testes, um, the adrenal glands, things like that. What if you don't eat fish? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you, get your, you, 
gets her omega oils from grass-fed beef. Grass-fed and finished. Very important. Fed and finished. It's only on the grass 70% of the time if it's grass-fed. If it's grass-fed and finished, it's 100. You don't want them on grains for the last three months. Pack it on the way just so that they can taste of different. It's not better, it's just different. So that's one way you eat more nuts and seeds. Uh, you flax seed, you uh, chia seed, sprouting them makes them more bio bioavailable for the body. Easier, easier to convert, easily. <laughs> easier to uh, assimilate. And the longer you do it, the better your body will get at it. Yes, any other questions? Uh, over wild caught fish, uh, I've heard that uh, some of it is coming from China, mm -hmm. some of these other countries. How can, how do, how can you hear a thing that it comes from the U.S. and it doesn't have all this? I think you've got to go with the labeling systems that are at those stores that you depend on. And you're right, um, a lot of these people will call it wild caught, but what they're doing in Vietnam, they're doing in China, they're doing a lot of these countries that have no regulation, they're actually just blocking off the channels of water where the sewage is coming out of their cities. And they're keeping the fish in there and letting them grow, eating human waste. And they're calling it wild caught. So yes, it's very important not to be getting your fish from Vietnam and countries that don't have the regulation. Very important. Great question. Thank you. So it's U.S. wild caught, Alaskan. It's, you know, it's got to be like if it's not quality enough to be labeled, don't buy it. Can you eat peanut butter on the eggs? Oh, killing me. Um, <laughs> I, I love peanut butter too. Uh, but no, um, unfortunately, peanut butter is either um, it's either organic and it still has all the fungus in it called um, the fungus that produces aflatoxin, which is a toxin to us. Or it's inorganic, and they sprayed it with a bunch of pesticides to kill the fungus. So now it's laden with pesticides. So peanut butter is a lose-lose. But almond butter is a good, well, it's okay. Um, <laughs> be realistic. Um, it's an okay substitute. Um, my favorite is cashew butter. Um, organic cashew butter is better. Um, and then, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'll be real with you. Um, we go almond butter, we go like a, there's a mixed nut butter that we buy, and then we go peanut butter. And then we go back and we rotate through. Otherwise, my kids don't have a care to tolerate my, yeah. my pestiness. <laughs> you know, like literally, they tolerate these things. Why? Because they get to go to their friend's house where they don't care. Yeah. And they don't know this. They care. They would care if they knew what we know. And that's why I ask people to bring a friend. If you love someone enough to bring them to this, that's love. If you showed up, you're loving yourself enough. What else is there? Bam. That's what we're here to do. We're here to support each other. This is why I want to make this office a community. This is the resource. This is where I want people to come to get their physical body healthy, just like we go to church to get our spiritual body healthy. We need a place where we can congregate and hang out with like-minded people. Well, you haven't mentioned one thing here in the South, fried foods. <laughs> that certainly wasn't on the plan. Was that, was, that, was that a terrible question or a comment? It's, it's, um, fried foods are really hard on the liver, hard to metabolize because of the way that they change, especially what we usually wrap those things we're frying in, which is called carbohydrates. We flour them, we corn them, we do whatever, and then we fry them, and at high temperatures where those grains turn into, they turn into carcinogenic molecules. They turn into PFOAs, but we get them in our body, and then we're now constantly detoxing them. That's the problem with fry. Would you cook just plain liver? Just by itself? Yeah, you can, you can, again, avocado oil is your high temperature oil. Um, and your medium temperature oil is your coconut oil or your olive oil. Neither one of those should ever go above 350. Avocado oil can go up to 475, and it's a monosaturated fat. It will withstand it without going into the carcinogenic, um, turning those into those compounds. Aromatases. Yes. Grape seed oil to. It is a high temperature oil, but again, it's it's less stable than avocado and typically more um, expensive. 
I can, this is why I do things. And again, it's better to buy your, uh, your oils and glass. Plastics, mm. right? They have, they're oily, they're phyllo. They allow some of those chemicals to soak into whatever's in there. The water, the oil, oil's even worse. Buying oils and plastic is even worse than buying water and plastic because water and oils don't mix, so there's a little bit of leakage. But when you put an oil inside of a plastic, it's just sucking those toxins in there. What else? What's the name of that heart test again? The what multifunction cardiogram. Okay. Oh, what does honey Honey is a great way to get the things of the earth that we're supposed to have in a form that allows us to not be allergic to them. Um, it's, nat it's natural assimilation, um, but it is a sugar. So it will metabolize like a sugar. And so anyone, so diabetes is sugar toxicity. Hyperlipidemia, these fancy, nice Latin words that mean you've got too much fat in your bloodstream. You've got too much sugar in your bloodstream. You're toxic from things. That's why they have to go away. So we're talking sugar. What about fructose and fruit? Um, you say they eat seven. Well, it, yeah, exactly. What, what about the fruit? Low glycemic fruit index. If you're trying to reverse cardiovascular disease, if you're trying to reverse diabetes, you're the advanced plan. So you're only getting the fruit sugars in a small quantity, Granny Smith apples, and then nothing in smaller amounts, moderate amounts of berry, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, and then lemons and limes, grapefruit. That's it. Mm. That's it if you're trying to reverse your disease <laughs> process. Once you've reversed the process and you've been healthy for a year, then you can start going on to the core plan and monitoring your blood sugar or monitoring your blood pressure or monitoring your cholesterol. What is ever's out of balance? And when you add certain items back in and then you go for that test and it's all of a sudden up, that's how you know. Or your ratios are out of balance. My HDL, LDL are now out of balance because I started eating oatmeal again. Well, there goes the oatmeal. And you just have to be that rationalization because you are a different human being today than you will be tomorrow and then you're different from me. So it's not my norms, it's your norms. Learning what you're about. These are the kind of things that a doctor, an MD like Dr. Adams will do for you. The chiropractor at Max Living will do for you. That's why we have these workshops. It's so that we can grow and learn together. And it will change us again. It's different for my five-year-old than it is for my 14-year-old than it is for me. So great it's all a lot. It is market. I don't know who's policing these people. That's corporate capitalism. That is the root of all evil, where our government values our corporations more than they value the individual. I am a, I'm, I'm an American. I think this is the best country on the planet. I've lived in Saudi Arabia. I've lived in some other places where oppression was the way of life. I understand that this is the best country, but I do not support corporate capitalism, where corporations' existence is more important than the individual. You're as important as Calvin's. What else? Oh, uh, Rational time. Sorry. Here we go. I know I'm drinking, but I'm so thankful that we've run long because it's all about questions. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give 15% off instead of the 10% off to Mr. Carson Root. Ooh. <laughs> I won the lottery. <laughs> I've never won anything. <laughs> All right, the well, next 15% off is going to uh, Danny Rowell. There you go, sir. All right, you are a up. You know I've just been put on a diet, right? Um, okay. um, Kenny Daniel, um, you have also gotten 15 rounds. Oh, I know who Kenny is. Who's Kenny Daniel? Kenny Daniel. Kenny Daniel. Kenny Daniel. There you go. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, ask the doctor. Um, my handwriting is even worse. Um, so here we go. And the last we got vitamin D uh, is going to Jan Rogers. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh.
Thank you um, for joining us. I hope you let our leaving empower to be your own doctor. Take your action steps. If you're not a patient, become one. If you need to change your diet, get started changing it. If you haven't changed your exercise, let's do it. And then when you're here at, your office, at this office, I want to have conversations about you, not about your dog. All right? It's not about the weather. Let's talk about you. God bless. Yes? I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but I drive a truck. And out west, I was talking to a, a driver that was hauling organic alfalfa to a dairy farm. And I said, organic alfalfa? He said, yeah. He said, I said the same thing until they showed me the difference. He said they put it in a centrifuge of cows not on organic alfalfa and ones was on organic, did a centrifuge, and it separated all the toxins in it, poisons. He said, he said it made a believer out of me. Boots on the ground, folks. We're our best source of information. It's our results. Unbelievable. God bless you. Have a great night. And y'all can check out whatever you need up there with Miss Anna. I'm going to start eating up alpha starting tonight. Organic. Turn this off. Man, you know, you know I got to eat whatever she